On this week's episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney, Jared shares the best restaurants and snacks at City Walk at Universal Orlando. Welcome to this week's episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer. And today we have got a fun episode for you as we wrap up our food series. So this is episode number 11 of 11. And today we are going to be taking you to City Walk at Universal Orlando. And we're going to be talking about the best places to eat and the best foods to have at City Walk. So definitely a great episode for you. Like I said, this wraps up our food episodes. This is again, number 11 out of 11. We have covered all the parks, both between Orlando and out in California at Anaheim and in Hollywood. And we've talked about all the best foods at all the parks, all the best places to eat, all the best atmospheres and the coolest places to go. Uh, So definitely you want to go check those out if you haven't heard them yet. Next week, we have a really cool episode for you where we're going to be talking about allergies in the parks. We know a lot of our listeners may have different types of allergies. Personally, we have friends that have a peanut allergy. So we're going to be talking about How do they navigate the parks and what does this really look like for them trying to stay away from peanuts? Because actually they're at quite a few places in the parks and there's a lot of different opportunities to come in contact with peanuts. So it's an important episode. We want to make sure that all of our friends and family that are going to the parks are having a great time, but also a safe time. So you're definitely going to want to tune into that episode next week, which reminds me Wherever you're listening to us at, please pause this podcast and click that subscribe button down below. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can click it there as well. It is free to subscribe to us. And that way you're going to know every time we drop an episode, which happens every single Tuesday, you're going to be updated and that's going to download automatically for you and let you know that episode's out there. So we've got a lot of really cool things coming. Uh, Like I said, we are going to do the episode about allergies at the parks. We are going to be talking about Disney cruises coming up in the future. We're also going to be going over shopping at the parks and some of the best tips and tricks there. And then we're going to talk about holidays and all kinds of different fun things. So there's a lot of cool things coming. We also ask if there's any tips or tricks that saved you some money. If you could throw us a couple dollars over at Patreon, there is a link down in the podcast description or on the YouTube description where you can support the show. And a couple dollars goes a long ways to keeping us going on this podcast every single week for you guys. So please definitely look for us there. And then right now you're going to get early access to our Butterbeer episode and our How to Go to Disney for Almost Free episode. But in the coming months, those are going to go out to our general public. So we will be replacing those with some other content that you're going to want to listen to that's going to be really cool. And you get a lot of other perks as well. So definitely you want to check us out over there at Patreon and support us to keep this podcast going. But Before I dive too much into this episode, I always like to give a couple different disclosures. And number one is obviously I'm one person. I can't eat everything out there. We do try to get to as many foods as possible. So this is a list of our opinions of the best restaurants that are out there and the best foods that are out there. Of course, if you have something that you think is even better than the ones I mentioned, shoot us a line over at Facebook over at A Dryer Dose of Disney on our page. And we will be sure to try that out on our next trip out there to Orlando. Uh, We do live in Denver, so we do try to get back and forth as often as we can. And we will commit to trying those food items. And we will be updating these episodes regularly. In fact, we just came back from a trip from Orlando. And I hope you guys like my cool new shirt. If you are listening to us on a podcast, you're not able to see it. But if you're on YouTube, you can. And a quick little description. It's a button-up shirt I got from Universal Orlando. And it's got all the classic movies on it that they have at their parks or had at their parks, including Jaws, E.T., Back to the Future, and some other 80s types hits. So it's a fun shirt. It's a very loud and very busy shirt, but I did just pick it up on my last trip. And so I wanted to wear it and show it to you guys today as one of my cool finds on my last trip out there. But when we were on our trip out there, we actually had a chance to try some additional food items that we hadn't had the privilege of trying before, and it actually changed some of our lists. So we've actually already gone back and updated those episodes to improve them, to have better quality information out there as to the best foods and items in the parks. And in fact, on some of them, the food items disappeared, which is why we wanted to make sure that we updated that so that you guys weren't out there looking for food items that weren't present anymore. So we do take that feedback seriously, and we do want it. My last disclosure is, 
We're going to do our best to not talk about the common things like hamburgers, hot dogs, pizza, chicken nuggets, things that the kids are going to typically order. We are going to try to stick to the things that the adults are going to want. That way you guys get the chance to plan out your trip a little bit better and think about the places you want to go. Because trust me when I say almost every single one of these places has good food for kids and it's going to consist of those traditional items that I just mentioned. So you don't have to worry about that a whole lot. Now, on today's episode, I am going to say I'm going to cover some hot dogs. And it's rare that we do, but we do have a really good pr- place down here at Universal City Walk that we did want to tell you about. So that's going to be coming up here shortly. But with that, let's go ahead and dive in. And today, like normal, we're going to start with our top five restaurants at City Walk. And this is a, a top five list like normal, but there's not a ton to choose from. In total, when you look at all of City Walk, there's maybe about a dozen different places to eat. And there's a handful of fast food places, and we're not going to cover those fast food ones. You have a lot of those back home, and you're probably not going to uh, be looking for those when you come to City Walk. But we're going to talk about the top five sit-down restaurants, starting at number five, which is actually one of my favorite go-to places, and that is Bubba Gump's. If you have never been to Bubba Gump's, it is a fun atmosphere surrounded around the movie Forrest Gump starring Tom Hanks. And it is a great movie from the 90s that highlights this man Forrest in his life and all the different places and impacts that he had and where he touched things throughout history, including things like Apple and things like ping pong tournaments and the uh, different wars. And he met multiple different presidents in this movie. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, They did really well with the restaurant. It's themed very much along the lines of him and Bubba, his friend in the movie, opening up their shrimping company. And obviously shrimp is the main staple on the menu, though you can get other things other than shrimp on the menu. But all the food there is really good. It's a really fun environment. It's not going to break the bank with most of the food prices. Being in the high teens, sometimes if you get a a bucket of boat trash or something that's a little bit bigger, it may be in the low 20s. But the food there is all really good. One other piece that I absolutely love about Bubba Gump's is it is owned by Landry's. And if you heard my episode around Disney Springs, we talked about the Landry's card and the Landry Select Club. And I'm going to talk about that again here for a moment. And that is because when you're a member of Landry Select, you can actually walk up to the hostess, let them know, and you usually will get the next available table. Meaning if there's a whole bunch of people out there waiting for tables, you can skip the whole line if you're a Landry Select member. And then they give you a $25 reward on your birthday every year. And then every time you spend a certain amount of money, you get another $25 reward. And it is $25 to join. But as soon as you join, you get that $25 reward right back. So though you're putting money into it, you are going to get that back on your next visit. So we love Bubba Gump's because of that. Anytime it gets crazy busy over there. And in fact, during the 4th of July, we went there with some family members. When we walked up, it was pouring rain outside. And if you know Orlando, the second it starts raining, which it does every day during the summer, people scatter and they try to find a place to go. And Bubba Gump's was no exception. There were a ton of people waiting to get in. It was dinner time and it was raining. So they're all hanging out underneath the awning out front. And we were able to walk up with our Landry's card and say that we were Landry Select members and we got the next available table. And we cut the entire line. And trust me, there were upset people there, but it was great to get in and get away from the rain and go have a great meal over at Bubba Gump. So that's why we recommend it. It made number five on our list. We do have four other choices that are better than Bubba Gump's, but I will say it is a great option. If you uh, don't know what you want to eat, it's going to be a lot of fun. They've got some cool merchandise tied to the movie there. So go check it out. Number four on our list is probably the most unique restaurant over at City Walk, and that is Cowfish. And Cowfish is doing this new take on hamburgers and sushi together. And they even have hamburger sushi or cheeseburger sushi, which is really good. And it's this new modern type of restaurant that is a fusion type feel where they combine different food elements and put them together in a very unique way. But the food is all very good. I will say that because of that, When you go in there, uh, it may be a little bit more difficult to find something that you're really wanting or hungry for because you're going to have to read each of the descriptions and figure out, yeah, no, this sounds like it's my taste or my flavor. They do have a kid's menu, so don't worry too much about that side of it. But if you do have those teenagers, the kids that are going to order from the adult menu, do know that it's going to take them a while to look through the menu and to find something that they really like. 
Now, do keep in mind, it has a large menu. They've got a lot of really great food. I can tell you, we have tried different things on the menu there now, and they've all been great. We've actually liked each and every one of them. So do know that you are going to get a great meal there and it's going to be very good. But because it is that fusion type atmosphere, it's going to take you a little longer to figure out what you're going to want to eat. When you're in the restaurant, it's very modern themed. It's very much like an Andy Warhol type of an experience with different colors. Uh, I think back to the Marilyn Monroe painting he did with different opposing colors of the same things on the walls. They've got digital aquariums up with cow fish. So these are fish with steer horns on their heads swimming around. So it's a fun environment. It's very different than Bubba Gump's. It's not tied to something that you're very familiar with, but it is a fun environment and they do have really good food. We do highly recommend cow fish. Number three on my list is the Vivo Italian Kitchen. And this is a really nice Italian restaurant at City Walk. Yes, they do have your traditional Italian foods there. But the reason this one made number three on our list is they have other menu items that a lot of other Italian restaurants aren't going to have. For example, they have swordfish on their menu. And if you've never had swordfish, it is actually a really good fish. I love it with lime. And it tastes great. So I would recommend get the swordfish there. Uh, they do have lobster ravioli. They, they do have short ribs. They've got a filet. They've got all different kinds of pasta, of course, being Italian. But they also have wood-fired pizzas. So that's why it made number three on our list is they have a very diverse menu that's going to accommodate a lot of different flavors and a lot of different preferences. And it's all great food. So we definitely recommend Vivo. Price-wise, just let everyone know, it is all priced in the mid-20s per plate, so it is just slightly more expensive than Bubba Gump's, pretty close to cowfish, but everything's going to be in the mid-20s or so. They do have, like I said, a ton of different options, so everyone's going to find something there that they like, which is why it's such a great place to go. It is, uh, being Italian, it is a little bit heavier of a food, so you're going to leave feeling very full, very fulfilled, so do know that about uh, Vivo. So if you're planning on going to the parks, other things like that, I may pick something a little bit lighter. But if I'm coming home from the parks or I'm just doing City Walk and I'm looking for a really good meal, Vivo is a great place to go and I would highly recommend it. That now takes me to number two on our list. And our number two restaurant is Antojitos Mexican Food. And this, you can't miss it. It's very colorful. It's, it's, it's very much on display when you see it. It is a great Mexican restaurant. We really love uh, this place just because you can get all the chips and queso, the chips and guac. We love sitting and chatting with our friends and family over appetizers. And then after a while, we'll order a meal and some drinks and the whole nine yards. And Antojitos does not disappoint in that area at all. They've got some great appetizers, traditional to Mexican food restaurants. They've got some great food. In fact, my favorite are the tacos al pastor, which are pulled pork tacos with some pineapple on it. Those are fantastic, so I definitely recommend getting those. But the better part about this is all of the meals are in that mid-teen range, so about $15 per meal. So this is one of the least expensive options over at City Walk. You're going to get a lot of really good food. They have some great appetizers. They have a really fun atmosphere. They are always uh, singing and dancing inside the restaurant, so that's always a lot of fun, which is why this made number two on our list. It's a combination of the atmosphere, the price, and the food. And it just, when you combine all three, it can only be beaten by one other restaurant, which we're gonna talk about here in just a moment. But Antojitos is a great place to go if you like Mexican food, and I highly recommend it. So you definitely wanna check that out on your next visit. But that now brings me to my number one place, which I have eaten at a handful of times. And in fact, on my last trip, got my first full course meal Meaning, and when I say full, I'm talking, we did an appetizer, we did entrees, we did desserts because we normally go there for the desserts, but that is the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium, which we like to go to for desserts. They have awesome shakes and awesome desserts over there. But like I was saying, we did the full experience this time where we went in, we got the appetizers, we got the food, and we also got the dessert. And let me tell you, I was floored. I was amazed at how good the food was over at the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. I got a shrimp mac and cheese that had a little bit of a spicy cheese on it that was fantastic. My wife got a croque monsieur, which is a ham and cheese sandwich that has the cheese griddled on the outside, so it's melted on the outside as well. That is something we've talked about at Epcot because the croque monsieur 
is one of the best meals at Epcot over in the French bakery. And so she tried it out here and it did not disappoint. It was just as good as the one at Epcot. And we loved the appetizers that were there. We loved all the food that we got. The wait staff was phenomenal. And if you've not been all the way into the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium, it is very much so designed to be like the chocolate factory from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. And within there, though, they have themed it with a very steampunk atmosphere, meaning all of the workers there are wearing steampunk materials and gear all over themselves. And then uh, they have people that walk around the restaurant. So they had a lady and she was walking around with who she called her brother, which is a robot. So this is very uh, similar to the robot, maybe in the movie Hellboy, if you've seen that. The robot walks around and talks to all the guests and she engages with them as well. It was a lot of fun. So the environment is awesome. The food is incredible. And I'm talking, it was one of the best meals we've ever had in Orlando. And then the dessert, just to top it all off, will knock your socks off and you'll need to be rolled home after you eat there. So do know that just like we talked about with the Vivo Italian restaurant, this is a heavier meal, especially if you're going to go in for appetizers, drinks. We did drinks as well. And they had a chocolate drink that was just great and had some chocolate bitters in there, which we absolutely loved. But with the dessert and all that, it's a very heavy meal. So I would say if you're going to go ride roller coasters at Universal, probably don't want to go to the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium before you do that. This would be a good place to go to when you're leaving the park or on your way home. Now, I will tell you, reservations are very difficult to come by here and it is best to get reservations. You can walk in. Uh, but there have been multiple times that we have tried to walk in and they said, we are full. We are not taking any more walk-in guests and we cannot help you. So that's why we hadn't eaten there until our last trip out there. But I was able to secure reservation by calling in advance and getting that all lined up before we even went down there. So I do very highly recommend you want a reservation at the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. So plan for a day when you're at Universal to finish your day over there at Toothsome and have a great meal to wrap up your time at the Universal Parks. Now, on our trip, I will do an episode on this as well. We had the privilege of spending a day just at City Walk, and we, that's when we ate at Toothsome Chocolate Emporium, and we did their new great movie escape rooms. We love escape rooms within our family, and we have done a ballpark, about 30 of them now. We're definitely over 20. We're getting close to 30 in total that we've done, so we said we wanted to try those out. And we just spent the day walking around City Walk and doing those escape rooms and eating. So it was a really great environment for us to have a very heavy meal like that. It didn't slow us down at all. We didn't feel sick afterwards. But I can tell you, if I did that and then I went to ride the Velocicoaster or Hagrid's uh, Magical Motorbike Adventure, I may feel a little sick after the fact. And I would stay off the Hulk completely. So know that it, it is a very rich meal. It is very sweet. It is very heavy, so you're going to walk away very full after you eat that. But those are our top five restaurants over at Universal City Walk. Today, normally I'll talk about the top five meals. I'm going to skip that because the top five meals are all at the top five restaurants, and I already went through and talked about some of the foods that we had there. I'm going to jump into now the top five snack items you can get over at City Walk. And we're going to start with number five, and that is Margaritaville. If you are an adult and you like margaritas, of course, you need to stop at Margaritaville. They do have a outward facing bar that you can walk up and get a margarita at. They also have some other drinks. I'll be honest, tequila is not my flavor. I'm a vodka and rum drinker, but I can get some rum drinks over at Margaritaville. So we like to head over there, go to that uh, walk up counter, get ourselves a drink. It's a fun time. Obviously, Jimmy Buffett has done a great job with his chain of restaurants across the world. And Margaritaville just has great music playing all the time. They've got great drinks. They've got a ton of great appetizers. So you can grab an appetizer while you're having a drink. And we highly recommend go over there, check it out, get some of the best drinks that you're going to get a, over at City Walk over at Margaritaville. Number four on my list is Hidden. It's actually tucked away closer to the great movie escape rooms. So you do have to find this place. And that is the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. You do have to walk up in between some of the other buildings to get in there. But the Hot Dog Hall of Fame is a small stand that serves, obviously, hot dogs. And like we talked about at the beginning, I try to avoid talking about hot dogs. But they have a hot dog on their menu that is so good, it had to make the list. And that is the Casey Barbecue 
with pulled pork hot dog. So this is a hot dog. And then they put barbecue on top with the pulled pork. And if you've listened to my other episodes, you know that I absolutely love barbecue. So this was a must have for me. It's a great hot dog. It is very good. It's good to share. It is a little bit messy with that pulled pork and barbecue on there, but they also have dozens of other choices out there from your plain Jane, just basic hot dog with mustard all the way up to some of the ones with the sauerkraut and all the different toppings. And then obviously we've got the KC barbecue pulled pork one. So lots of great options over there. We definitely encourage you if you enjoy a hot dog and you want one with all the fixins, you definitely want to go to the hot dog hall of fame. It is a fun place and they've got some great food over there. Number three on my list is over at NBC Sports, and this one you can't miss. So like some of the others we talked about, like Hot Dog Hall of Fame, you have to go find it. NBC Sports is a huge restaurant front. It's got huge, gigantic LCD screens out there on the front playing different sports. So you can find it from pretty much anywhere at City Walk. It is very easy to locate, and it is like going into any other restaurant that has a lot of different TVs playing a lot of different sports. So right off the top of my head, I'm thinking places like Buffalo Wild Wings or Dave and Buster's or any type of sports bar that's just going to have 20 or 30 TVs up. That is what NBC Sports is all about, is highlighting the different sports that are going on. Now in there, they have a giant pretzel, and this is a Bavarian style pretzel that comes with mustard and cheese and all kinds of different dipping sauces. And it is phenomenal. Now it is large. It is a giant pretzel. Typically, though, two people can take it down pretty easily. Of course, a group of four or five could all share it and everybody gets a couple different bites and can try the different dipping sauces. But the giant pretzel over at NBC Sports is very good. In fact, it's one of their top sold menu items. So we encourage you, if you're looking for a quick bite, a quick little treat, and you like salty, you're going to want to go over and get a giant pretzel over at NBC Sports. Number two on my list is one that you probably don't have in your town, and that is Voodoo Donuts. They do have a Voodoo Donuts uh, shop over there at City Walk, but you can actually order some donuts through their mobile interface, and they will have them at a mobile pickup counter that you can't miss as you're walking over towards Universal Studios Florida. So as you're walking uh, through City Walk, if you're familiar with it, you know that the path does split to go around some water. There's bridges on either side. And where it splits, if you're walking in, uh, you're going to go left to go to Islands of Adventure. You're going to go right to go to Universal Studios Florida. When you go, Voodoo Donuts is over to the right, but they also have that stand where you can get mobile order pickup. And it's very quick and convenient to get, but their donuts are great. Now, of course, my family really likes the Maple Bacon Bar. Uh, They think that's a good one. I love two of their donuts. One is the Grape Ape. And I did say grape as in like grape jelly. And it is not a jelly donut, though. It is a raised donut that has a great frosting and then some powder on it that gives it just a little extra kick, like getting a Jolly Rancher or something like that. But that grape ape is a phenomenal donut. And then they have a raised donut that's an Oreo donut with white chocolate on it, covered in Oreo sprinkles and a whole bunch of Oreo stuff on top. Of course, they do all the other candies, all the other devices over there. I would recommend go online, take a look at their whole lineup. They're all great. Those are my two favorites, but know that the Maple Bacon Bar is probably one of their top ones, and that's my wife and daughter's favorite one over there. So Voodoo Donut is a great time. In fact, a lot of guests, what they will do is when they're coming in, they will do a mobile order before they get to the city walk, and then by the time they're walking up to go to the parks, they will have their mobile order box over there waiting for them on the Universal Studio side. They'll go pick that up, and regardless of which park they're going to, you can walk back over to the other one. If you're going to Islands of Adventure, it's only a couple feet away, but they'll pick that up and they will take it in to the parks with them and enjoy donuts as they start out their day. I honestly can't think of a better way to start my day than with a voodoo donut going to an amusement park. That just sounds amazing to me. So it is a great idea. It's a great way to get your day going. And then that'll spread out some of the food throughout the day so that you're not trying to cram it all in either at the end or during mealtime. So try a voodoo donut next time you're out there. Our last one is back over at the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. Like I told you, we have spent a lot of time over there getting the shakes and the desserts, which they have through a walk-up counter inside the restaurant. They also have other types of candy, including caramel apples, toffee, different cookies, different types of treats, depending on the holiday or season you're in. And we recommend going there for a shake. Their shakes are phenomenal. They have a birthday shake that has a confetti cake on top of the shake, and then it's covered in sprinkles. 
That one's very sweet and very good. Of course, they've got multiple chocolate ones. They've got a strawberry cheesecake shake, which I absolutely love because I love cheesecake. And that place is amazing. I will say every time we go there, we are talking about this shakes and making sure that we go over there to tooth some to get a shake, especially on our way out if we're leaving and it's earlier in the day because we can knock out both the Universal Parks usually before it gets too late. So we will get a shake on the way out. We absolutely love them. Our goal has been to try to work our way through the menu. And I will tell you, we have not ran into a shake or a dessert we did not like. Now, some of their other desserts, so like they have a s'mores dessert. They have a, a brookie dessert, which is what we got this last time. Those are larger and two to three people can probably share them. On the s'mores dessert or the brookie dessert, you had multiple cookies, multiple brownies on s'mores. You had huge, gigantic marshmallows in there with the graham cracker and the crust. And, and there was a brownie piece in there as well. But they are great to share. Uh, they do have some other options for you, like I said, in the store, but they are phenomenal. So that's why we always go in and we share them. And that's why it takes time for us to work our way through the whole menu is because we're trying to share them one at a time. So toothsome shakes, though, are a must have anytime you're over there at City Walk. So definitely stop in. And the best part is you don't need a reservation to get the desserts and the shakes. You can do it through the counter right when you walk in. So with that wraps up our food series. Now that we've talked about Universal Orlando City Walk, again, all of our other episodes, by the time you hear this one, are live. So we encourage you, go check those out. We, like I said, on our last trip, had some great food. We've updated those episodes already. So by the time you hear this, and by the time those even go live, they're already updated because we did it before they went live. And we will be going into some exciting other episodes here in the coming weeks. So definitely you want to click that subscribe button and check us out every single week when we drop our new episodes. We hope you have a magical week and have fun planning your next vacation. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.